Hey everyone, Eric here. And today we're going to do a little test by pitting V-Ray up against SketchUp's Diffusion to find out which one is going to get us a better photorealistic result. Now you can see there's a V-Ray rendering here behind me. That's what I know how to do. That's what I'm working on a project right now with the SketchUp team. And that's something that I want to think is going to be a part of my process. Now, like you at home, you're probably seeing more, um, whether that's Instagram or Facebook or even LinkedIn posts that are using AI generated images. And for some of you who make a living creating visualizations, question is, is, hey, how much longer do we have left? Well, I'm here to hopefully dispel any myths and rumors to say, you know, you've got a little bit more time than you think. So let's go ahead and pit these two up against each other and see who comes out on top. All right, we're gonna come back to V-Ray in just a minute. So what I wanna do is actually spend a little bit more time in Diffusion. So I've got my coffee shop model. It's a little bit of a different view, but that's okay. I've actually rendered this one too in V-Ray if we really wanna compare apples to apples. But let's go ahead and find, start by launching Diffusion. Now, I'll be the first one to say that I am not a stable Diffusion or mid-journey pro. Now there's a lot of stuff you can do with prompts and with settings and styles and things that are going to impact your result. Because every time you tweak a parameter, as you know, if you've already played with this, every time you change a slider, it's going to reinterpret and it's gonna kick back or re-guess what it is you're trying to do. So let's start by going exterior photorealistic because that's what it is. And I'm just gonna type in coffee shop daytime, just kind of being literal with what it is. I know there's a lot more I can say about it, but I'm just kind of wanting to see what happens at sort of a bare minimum. So let's go ahead and generate and see what we get. Robots are doing their thing. That's fine. And here it is. So I'm gonna click on a few of these here. Maybe I can make this a little bit bigger just so you can see at home. This is interesting. Um, there's a wall there that wasn't in my view originally. And it gives you kind of three versions. So I get to actually compare this one, which looks pretty good actually. I think if you look at the way that the materials um, between the brick and the roof, it understood vines, it did not understand the glazing, and it kind of put it with an ocean background, which I think is sort of, sort of cool. And let's look at this third version. Yeah, okay, mm, let's, let's see if we can make this a little bit closer to what I had in mind. So I'm gonna say red brick walls and red, umbrellas with black um, tables and black chairs. Now, I kind of wish I didn't have to describe it in with this much detail, but I, I, like I said, you know, the better the garbage in, garbage out. In this case, a good prompt will get a better result. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that and we are going to try again. Wait a second as they sort of cue the servers. So let's look at this one. We've got red brick, that's for sure. It sort of made everything red though. And this is interesting. It's sort of the space in between the um, lights here. These are like um, bistro lights. And it kind of filled those in almost as if it's a canopy. It didn't interpret the white space behind that. That's okay. I do like the flowering vine. I kind of like the facade treatment of the weathered red brick. It did pick up the red umbrellas and I think those are okay too. So let's see what this one did. Red door, not opposed to that. Not really liking the red brick ground. I think it's a little bit too much red brick. So let's maybe see if we can give it a prompt to tell it what to render on the ground. Um, concrete ground. And let's also try um, sunny day, something nice and happy. And let's also go back and do something like, um, what else do we want? Um, some maybe trees in the background. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to get that. It may be asking too much, but let's try. So I'm gonna reset that here. And we are going to also check our settings one more time. Now, I'm saying respect model geometry. Let's pull that back a little bit. If I'm, I'm actually kind of open if you wanna interpret, if, if AI wants to sort of interpret, and I do want my prompt to have a higher influence. So let's see what happens when I say, read my prompt, Feel free to take a little bit of artistic license and we'll see what that gives us. So let's generate again. 
And let's go ahead and look at the result. It didn't understand that I wanted concrete ground. Now this might be something where I actually need to model the ground in, and then that way it'll know a little bit better. It'll have a material to work with. It is a little bit brighter and it is a little happier. So I think that's good. And in this case, it's still telling me that there's a brick wall beyond, which is really not what I'm looking for. But, you know, on the whole, it's it, there are some elements that I think are starting to work. Now, again, just for comparison, but this is what I was able to do in V-Ray um, because I can control the metal material, the wood decking. If I want red umbrellas, I get red umbrella. I just change the material in V-Ray. And then of course you can always um, do some post-processing or add some filters or whatnot. So if I put those two slightly different view, but again, I could, I could, um, let's see, I'm going to see if I can put those here. I'll just do it in editing. I'm going to move one over and put those two up next to each other. And you can see that to me, I don't like the guessing game. I like to know that if I make this umbrella here, I want it to be exactly there. Or if I don't want light poles, I'm not going to get light poles. If I want a particular shadows to hit a certain place, I could go into SketchUp and I can turn my shadow settings on and I can adjust the shadows so that they hit exactly where I only and exactly where I want them. So in that case, the level of control that I have using uh, V-Ray, if I come over here, tool palettes, V-Ray for SketchUp, you know, open that up. And again, if V-Ray is not your choice, that's fine. You can always um, do the same thing with something like Enscape, but this ability to sort of have realistic lights and be able to toggle them on and off and replace, say, the, the dome light, be able to bring in an HDRI and control that material, um, add emissive materials, all that level of control that you get with the V-Ray is something that I really, really appreciate. And I could spend I don't know, I could probably spend days with different prompts and not get sort of the result that I'm after. But listen, I don't want to sit here and just rag on diffusion because that's not my point. My point is to say that it's not meant to be a photorealistic rendering replacement. It's a conceptual. It's more of like a generate an idea on something simple or do something out of the box. Give me something. If you're going to guess, and you're going to give me something that I'm not expecting, well, then go big, go for it. So for example, I don't know, I looked online and I was just browsing for different, um, you know, again, I said, I'm not a prompt engineer, but you can just look up here. Like here's a website right here where it says 70 stable diffusion architecture prompts. And that's kind of cool. So you could go through and read some of these flower gardens, concert halls. And this one I thought was fun. A library nestled within a vibrant coral reef. So let's come back over here and let's do that again. Let's pop that prompt in. And then let's look at, you know, respecting model geometry, bring that down, prompt influence, leave that high. And let's see, it does it. Let me do no style. Let's do no style. Cause I wanna let them, I wanna let stable diffusion tell me what style it wants. I'm gonna reset the camera one more time and I'm gonna click generate. And I think this is where you start to see where diffusion begins to shine. And I think in this case, literally, this is not something I would probably be able to create in V-Ray, this kind of result. It would be something I wouldn't think of doing. It's something like the way that it interpreted the signage as coral panels, the way it turned vines into a reef, um, the way it put the entire thing underwater and cast these really cool light rays coming down. That's an effect that I probably wouldn't be able to do it all in V-Ray. Wouldn't even think of how to approach this. The sand, the fish, really interesting and weird and psychedelic and imaginative and fun. So let's do one more of those prompts because I want to kind of just reiterate that it's this is more about early stage ideation and sort of out of the box thinking. And that that is where, you know, these tools, at least as where they are right now, is going to um it's going to thrive so let's see here i want to do what was going to work with my coffee shop um this one talks about a cyberpunk city that would be cool i like that 
Let's go ahead and see if we can get that to work. So I'm going to replace that prompt, paste it right in. I'm going to leave all the other settings alone because I actually did like what it did just there. And then I'm going to, of course, I've already reset this. So I'm just going to hit generate. And let's see our result. So a little bit interesting. I think it interpreted the inside of the coffee shop as the city. So maybe not exactly what we're going for. But again, a cool look. Looks like a rooftop deck that you're kind of looking out onto sort of a futuristic city. And again, it also has to do with, you know, the model that I'm working with. You know, I could just use something like a simple cube and tell like maybe just like a simple massing shape and let diffusion do most of the heavy lifting. In this case, the more detail I have, the more I'm also giving diffusion the opportunity to guess at what each of those pieces are. And it may guess right or it may guess wrong or it may just surprise you. So either way, you know, you can kind of see where diffusion is beginning to shine versus where, in my opinion, it still has a lot of room to grow. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, if you haven't played with diffusion yet, I'm going to encourage you to go do that. It's an extension. You can find it if you don't have it with your version, depending on which version of SketchUp you have. You can go ahead and find it in the extension warehouse and add it and, you know, just test it out and play with it and see what you come up with. And I think, again, that's the cool thing. V-Ray, I want that ultimate control. I want to know exactly what I'm going to get as a result. But with Diffusion, I don't know what I'm going to get. And that's kind of the wild bit about it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you there. And again, give it a try yourself. Tell me what you think in the comments. What do you think? Are you worried about your time running up? Do you feel like this is encouraging or is this discouraging? Let me know your thoughts and uh, let's keep this conversation going there. So thanks as always for watching and tuning in and I'll see you next time.